I'm The Voice, and this is a Divi community produced video from the foundation. Divi Updates, episode 15. Today I've got with me Rob, and I've got Neegs, and boy, have we got an update for you. Woohoo! I said hey. that laughingly. I was having fun before I ran through that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What are we going to talk about today? We've it's Let's, been a, been a little while, but we uh, but some cool stuff has happened out in the real world. Uh, yeah, we, had we got Tr Trump. Tr yeah, Trump is here. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. When you say we, you mean U.S. Right? Yes. Yeah, of course. Yes. Yeah. yeah, but I, yeah, I think the scope. And like the results of that will have like some wave in all the world and especially for crypto, right? That's yeah. really interesting. I've been, uh, I've been at some events and like I talked to somebody from South Africa. I've been talking to some people from Europe and uh, yeah, they, you know, obviously it's our election, but that, you know, lots of optimism uh, abounds uh, throughout the industry um, from this, not just, not just, uh, not just Republicans in the United States, but in this industry, a lot of people are pretty happy about it. That's for sure. And we've seen that also in the market, right? Like we've seen that um, right before the election, it was still pretty hesitant. And I think like yeah. a couple of days after it started to um, wake up and Bitcoin hit new highs and it's now at almost $95,000. So it is definitely showing that uh, people were hoping for that. Um, at least in the crypto sphere, and and yeah. it is really um, reflected. And we've we're seeing a lot of signs from um, this future new administration. And I think we'll go through a few of those signs about their team and what is what is taking place. Yeah, definitely. Let's see. I'm looking at it right now. As of right now, it's ninety four four. Um, I don't know what it, like it was close to, but that's the you know. If you want to know when we're recording this, that's about what, what it is, 94,407, <laughs> um, which is amazing because I remember just looking at this just a little while ago. And, you know, it's like we're, we're stuck in this 50 to 65 range for months and months. <laughs> so it's kind that's of right. early, I have to say. <laughs> that's right. All right. Is, is, is this the highest? Is 95 the highest? I think it is, isn't it? Huh? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's 94,760. Yeah. I mean, I'm... I'm watching on Binance right now, so they're all kind yeah. of close to each other, but not the exact number. But it, it is getting very close to 95, and it is digging in the ceiling, if I can say that. It has been yeah. doing that now for a few weeks, and yeah. it is uh, really nice to see. Yeah, the, the high today so far is 94.781, according to my app, my Delta app here. 94.781, uh, yeah. yeah, that's, yeah, that's pretty yeah. wild. It's crazy. It, it has been. It has been a positive. It has. Yeah. There's been no question. Just what you guys said. Sorry. Um, it has been a push right since the beginning, right after that election and pre to that election. People were curious, and people were interested, and things were being said. And maybe we can talk about that too about things being said because a lot of speculation, right? Yeah. Um, and now, after the election, just in that couple of weeks, it's just been, where's the ceiling? Nope, that's not it. <laughs> where's the ceiling? That's not it. Nah, so it's we're definitely we're entering into a new era. Now, where it will go after the first of the year is still up in the air. I don't know. We will see how it goes. But the sentiment, I would say, is positive. Um, from most all people talking about crypto, right? That yeah. you could also look that as a sign that it's that it's a bull, and maybe we're entering the next phase into a bull. But I, I don't think so. So I don't know. Not, and I, I mean, mean on the other side of the curve. That's what I mean. You know, it, it's really one of those crypto stories. Um, I think most of our listeners, um, viewers, if you want to watch the avatars, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, most of most of you have been experiencing those things where you see it growing little by little. Initially, it's a rumor, and then it's taking more and more place, and a lot more people are starting to believe it. And then you get to the time where it, it really becomes a reality. And I think that's really what happened with the Trump candidacy and kind of all his team, right? Uh, RFK Jr. and their stance on crypto. Like all of yeah. that was looking like it would be 
very positive um, if it was to happen. And then it kind of happened. And we see that now the, um, the team that they're building and the people that are nominated, and we see a lot of pro crypto voice. Um, it is extremely uh, comforting, right, for yeah. everyone who is holding Bitcoin or everyone who had hope in this industry. Uh, it is becoming a lot more mainstream to um, to talk about crypto. Um, and and yeah, like there are those talks about um, strategic reserve, and it would be interesting to see that now normal um, the normal press, not only crypto press, is kind of speculating about which shape it could take and um, yeah. who could be in charge of that. Um, and of course, all those news are extremely bullish for uh, for crypto, right? So it would be interesting to see um, what the next month and probably year um, is, is bringing us. Uh, but yeah, I think there are also uh, the new treasury candidate, like the, the ones that are looked upon for taking this role, are all mm -hmm. pro crypto. Um, all pro some are more than others, but they are all pro crypto, so it is really great. At least, and the then, stupid, uh, then there's uh, been some of the. Go ahead. Yeah, at least the stupid mindset of uh, of like we want this thing, but we you know we want to make sure it's responsibly regulated so it doesn't hurt. At least that that mantra is gone. It was so yeah. it was so frustrating to listen to over and over again, as if they were like. Uh, you know, trying to, uh, you know, be on both, you know, actually, that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to be on both sides at once. And uh, I'm, I'm so happy that, so that, you know, I haven't heard that since the election, you know, <laughs> you know we want, we want to right. support this economy, but protect the consumer. Get out of here. <laughs> Just let us build this <laughs> you know? <laughs> that's right. I think it's a more uh, free market uh, approach uh, for yeah. this administration. Uh, however, we'll still see, you know, how how it goes. It's probably not going to be as smooth as we would all hope. However, it is clearly a major turn in the yeah. in the way the U.S. government um, will position itself for uh, like versus like towards crypto, right? And yeah. I think it will also lead to major changes in other government because, as you mentioned earlier, right? It, even if it's the U.S. election, it really has a ripple effect in pretty much all the world. And yeah. if U.S. starts to value or put this in a more official position, obviously uh, more countries will follow through. Um, they will establish their own policy, uh, including yeah. Bitcoin. And, and I think it is a major change. I think yeah. the yeah. other uh, good thing in that, that, might actually kind of shake uh, the industry a lot is that it's probably also going to be more serious because as it's taking this place now, uh, some people will try to defend the reputation and try to avoid yeah. being mixed with, you know, all the scam industry that is uh, embedded into crypto. And so yeah. I think we're, we're really uh, going to see very interesting times. It just okay. depends upon who and where and when. I mean, it's a, it's sort of a cliche to say that, but it's hard even for some of those people to discern between legitimate small projects trying to come to life and scam projects. Because in the beginning, they all kind of look the same, right? There are signs that we could say that, yes, you could look to, but it is hard. They're going to have to come up with something. There is some portion of me that says it should be completely wide open. It should be completely free and buyer beware. It's that, that old, what was that uh, thing that we had mentioned just a couple of episodes ago? The um, Mer crypto Miranda? Yeah. That, right. that if you're going to participate in this, know that you yeah. could lose everything. Yeah. If you participate in this, your worst nightmares can happen or your most unimaginable wild dreams can happen. It just depends upon why you're becoming a, a participant in this network. What are your goals? You know, there needs to be some sort of a crypto Miranda. Yeah. Well, there also needs to be better ways to for people we, or people's friends and such to discern uh, what is, you know, likely a scam and what, what likely isn't. And, you know, yeah. Three of us, you know, are, are constantly 
hitting the he- the hammer the hammer on the head of if it's custodial you know it's probably it, you know if it's not like if it's not a rug pull or an exit scan then it's attackable like like correct if, if we can you know discern things based on how much decentralization or how much custody is involved with providing that utility that's the stuff i stay away with i stay away from um as much as i can i mean sometimes you can't like all you know all bridges is uh our our points of centralization uh but if i want to get funds from one place to another or assets from one place to another this you know at the moment there's not really much of a choice yeah that's an excellent segue um i it's definitely that the current technology that is available or um more accurately the ones the ones that have been created after bitcoin to be able Mm -hmm. to create more utility and leverage a lot of different processes with the blockchain they really took a lot of trade-offs and it doesn't really help for understanding unless you really are an expert uh, to understand what are the different ecosystems what are the different technology they use and what are their weaknesses right Um, it is it is really almost impossible for uh, someone who is not a professional or really extremely involved in in crypto technology and developments and so i think that what we will bring with the side chains and the ability to connect blockchains together trustlessly will bring a lot of simplification in all that uh, that will allow a developer to develop one thing and then connect yeah. with everything but also it will also allow the user to not have to require to be an expert to uh, make sure that they don't step on the on the bad project or on the wrong infrastructure, because all of that will be a lot more simple. And it will really, I think, um, promote some uh, legitimate utility uh, compared to what you have today that the, I would say the lack of clarity is really fueling a lot those scams. Um, They really take advantage of the um, ignorance or lack of understanding of, of people. And and that's how really they they thrive. And I think that those all those things coming and the technology that will bring, and again the um, positive approach of the new U.S. administration will most likely help build a more mature industry. I, I just want to add this. You know, you talked about building a more mature industry. We may have an opportunity, at least in our educational system. Look. We're dealing with a technology that's a major shift. It's no different than having a horse and buggy or your feet (laughs) or a horse and then having the railroads come in. It's no different than having horse and buggy, the railroads, and then having the automobile. And I guess I've skipped some technologies in there. But those people who created those new technologies were on top of those technologies. They couldn't even dream of what those technologies would be like as they are today. I think we have to start with our our, our students, our, our education system. We need to talk about what it means to be truly free or have self-custody. I mean, I'm going in another direction, but if we start young enough that's what a lot of people complain about they say they can't understand this well that's not true i'm old anybody can understand it if they just take small bites at a time it takes time but if you start with a young kid you start with a child and you start with the basics i'm not saying cryptography is the goal for a person who's seven years old but you start explaining to them simple concepts on what that is and that goes through that high school age. We're in another generation then. If we're going to be pro-crypto, if we're going to be uh, 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 forward thinking, then we really need to train up our next generation to really understand this. Because let's just face it, our Xers and our, uh, we would call them boomers, that would be you know parents of ours, they don't, a lot, most of them don't get it. And they may never get it. That doesn't mean they can't participate. In fact, that's my whole goal is to help them, encourage them. But if we don't take advantage of this opportunity and training up our youth, I think we've I think, missed a big uh, thing. They're misunderstanding or not understanding for two different reasons, though. So I think boomers are not understanding because this is a pretty technical thing that they're not used to at all. And I think um, 
the younger people are not understanding because they grow up uh, kind of in an age where they didn't, uh, where the idea of ownership of money in particular uh, isn't ingrained. When we, you and I grew up, there, it was cash. We all, we had cash. Sure. Credit cards were for the, the elite. You and I, we used dollars and the feeling of ownership of the money that you have is in your hand and it's very physical. As things went to PayPal and la la la, the idea of ownership or custody of the funds kind of gets lost in the technology. And so we, and this is bringing it, and crypto really brings that back. Yeah. You really have to have an understanding of ownership. And I don't think, I, I don't think, it's not a matter of, like whether they it was thought to be taught i don't think it was specifically taught for us it was just part of the way the economy works like you, you it's a cultural change yeah it's so a cultural change that's so i mean i teach my kids about ownership um like uh, as much as i can like what what does ownership mean and i even have to remind myself sometimes um about like if i give something to my kid then i don't i don't actually have uh, a say on what happens to that thing and like i have to remind myself um and that just happened that's why i'm bringing that up uh but in my reminding myself and explaining to him like if i give something to you then it's yours and i don't get to say what happens to that anymore those th those kind of I I ideas are really lost these days like we don't really uh we don't really teach that and schools have never taught it because they never really had to but if we want to teach like why custody is important in crypto the idea of ownership needs to be <laughs> retaught in a way that it is currently not right sure but that's right i yes yeah, so and go ahead. the thing is that if you if you look at the habits that we have taken is really we are we have gotten used to trust um intermediaries especially because in most of the western countries um at least we have like a pretty strong legal system to be able to you know go against people who would um, attempt to scam you uh, in those uh, transactions. However, in crypto, um, a lot of time, if you don't, if you're not careful about your self-custody, then you will be trusting an actor that doesn't have an established reputation to whom you will not have any recourse to go against. Potentially, you don't even know who this person is because it's a multi-six smart contract. Um, it's any of those sure. tools that enable um, bad actors to be able to shield themselves from any repercussions of their you know, malicious actions. And it becomes even more important to put a very strong accent on why, um, why it is very important to understand self-custody, understand the technology you are interacting with before actually committing to it, right? Yeah. I think, I think so. I think so. I, I, it's a frustrating topic, nevertheless. You, you know, it, it is a loss of knowledge that we've had generation upon generation. We can talk about education we can talk about parents because a good example is what rob just did he's teaching his his son about ownership i mean there's a lot of things that we can talk about about this but the fact is is i think the point is is that we need to make sure we re-educate i i hate to even use that sort of phrase but we need to at least inform our upcoming generation and maybe and maybe that's a good thing we we should encourage because there's many people who will listen to this look we have it's not like we have a million people listening to this podcast but we have hundreds of people listening to these podcasts and of course that's a little that's a little segue into if you're not sharing this podcast share this podcast if people have questions send it in that's always been something that we've opted into but if you're a parent you should be teaching don't rely upon your teachers you should have learned that over the last four years. Your teachers, most of them, have their own interests at heart. They don't always have your children's interest, except when it aligns with their interest. You are still the boss. These yeah. are your kids. Train your kids up right. Teach them about these kinds of things. Yeah. If you well, we have questions, I'm willing to help. Really have Pardon? 
philosophy. We've never really had philosophy in K through 12 where we discuss things like ownership and, and you know, and self ownership and, and things, you know, really, I mean, I certainly didn't have it. I know that only certain branches of economics are taught in colleges and others yeah. are ignored. Um, and so, um, like, I don't know if it's just a fact of like, you know, just never really necessary before or society has changed in such a way that is now necessary in order to, you know, I don't mean complete an education on a piece on a piece of paper. I mean, to have an education about everything that's out there, people have different ideas, uh, but you can't really make your own decisions if you don't understand, you know, the, the spectrum of, of things that are out there on any topic. Um, and so philosophy and economy, I mean, I, I went to engineering school. I definitely didn't get any of that. Um, yeah. <laughs> in, in, yeah, because it's not also the direction that education – and I, I want to clarify that I'm really speaking for, I think, the West mainly because I'm not really familiar with how it works in other parts of the world. But here, we had a direction where even if – everyone has always been kind of um, careful about uh, the government. We were still in kind of a trend where trusting the government and trusting institutions and trusting like basically, you know, authority places was seen as kind of a good thing. And I think that's why a lot less accent to self ownership and uh, responsabilization as, um, has been lost, right? And and that's why um, I think that crypto kind of brought that uh, back in front of everybody. And mm -hmm. it's still very uh, a very small part of the population who is really knowledgeable about it. So I think there is a major opportunity if you if you're familiar with it to, of course, teach it to your children. But I also think that it will kind of bring a, a bigger movement for people to take their uh, finances and other things in hand. I think we also see the same kind of movement in media where, you know, all of that is getting a lot more decentralized than it ever was when I was young. And, and I believe that um, it is something that will be strengthened. It is also because we've seen, I think, more and more uh, the government taking more and more place and people yeah. are also getting, you know, a little more... Um, interested to look into solutions to um look into an alternative yeah 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 i just i just remember and i maybe we'll move on to the next topic because i can talk about this for a long time but i just remember it being in school just going back full circle again and having i must have been a home economics class right you know so you have they would teach you how to manage a checkbook right those mm -hmm. kinds of things and that taught you that and we also dealt in things like gift certificates not a card not a debit card yeah. not something you could add funds and take it off but a gift certificate you knew if you lost that gift certificate you lost all that money yeah <laughs> you know it was like and you knew if you traded in that gift certificate and you didn't spend all of the money on that paper gift certificate you got money back but you didn't get cash back you got money back on another gift certificate it had a different right. number right and it had a different amount. When I explain crypto to Xers and boomers, that's how Bitcoin works. When you mm -hmm. have a transaction, they go, oh, I get it now. Right. If I say that same thing to somebody who's under 45, forget it. They have no visualization. <laughs> yeah. They're used to debit cards. Yep. yep. It's actually easier in that respect for some older people than it is younger. No. Yep. All right. Should we talk about Divi for a bit? Uh, cool, yeah, I think cool. that's, um, that's a good time. So yeah. first of all, we have actually a good news. Uh, we were finally able to um, validate an account on Bitru. <laughs> um, sorry, uh, Jeff has been a tremendous help for that. Um, he'll help us uh, provide the structure. Uh, so it will be uh, used with a Jeff structure. And so we'll be able to restart the market making uh, whenever we find a new partner. Um, unfortunately, uh, CLS is having, I've, I don't know if most of you have seen, but there has been an SEC um, case that was just started and then they accused CLS to be doing market manipulation among other people. I think BitGet and other, 
other of their competitors. And basically, they, they're not able to provide this service anymore. However, they did introduce us to uh, one of their partner who is basically proposing to offer us the, the same kind of service. Um, the good news is that CLS will um, refund us for the last two months. We still had two months um, where we had basically service that was paid for, and they will be able to, to refund us uh, back the $4,000 and we'll be able to put them uh, with our next partner. We're not sure that we'll be uh, moving forward with um, the partner they introduced us to. Um, first of all, the, the price is still a bit expensive. And as we're not on KuCoin, we, we potentially don't need the same level of service. So we need to look into our options. But, but yeah, we, we'll probably give you some information on that um, by the next update. But the end result is so, that the, much of the market making will be moving, right? That's end right. The result is, is things uh, are moving. Getting, yes, getting exactly. very soon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and just a reminder, even though that we're talking about the market maker on Bitru, moving to Bitru, just a quick recap, we are on Zegex, right? So you can mm -hmm. also start your own market maker options on Zegex. You can buy, you can trade on Zegex. You can do all of those things. You can still do those some of those things on Bitru. You can still go into Bitru and buy and trade and do whatever you want. Um, uh, but Zegex is where we just had the listing we mentioned just a couple of updates ago. If you don't have an account there, you can create an account. It's open for everybody um, pretty much anywhere. So go ahead and take a look there. Anyway, sorry. I wanted to segue into somebody we just listed. No, that's yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. Definitely should have mentioned ZX. <laughs> yeah, and I think we should also remind uh, that Ascendex is actually currently our most active platform. So they do have uh, market making active there. Um, and, and I think that's why uh, more people are attracted there. So we do believe that once the market making will be able to restart on Bitru, it will probably equalize. And um, I, I think that would be a good thing to restart, um, you know, getting, getting more users, getting more traction behind DV. I think it would be a critical component. Yeah, I think so too. It's just that it, it, Zega, excuse me, Ascendex isn't quite open to um, anyone in the U.S. So, so that's the broad. I think acceptance. they do have some non-KYC um, opening, but is not as uh, welcoming as um, as Zegex, yeah, Obviously, I would have to look because the last time I tried it, now it was a few months ago um, when I tried to open an account. It uh, it wouldn't allow me unless I did do a full KYC of sorts. And once it okay. found my phone number was elsewhere, um, of course, that's when they said, I'm sorry, you're not able to participate. So uh, you anybody can absolutely go there. Anybody can absolutely try before the next updates. I will do it again and I will attempt it again. As everyone knows who followed in any of the channels, I helped people or at least instructed people that it's very easy to set up on Bitru. They are very open right now to the U.S. Uh, uh, population and anywhere else in the world, except for some of the countries that are, of course, regulated by other government bodies that are that are not allowed. And if you're in the U.S., it's the New York and Texas kind of a situation where those two states are restricting the exchange not the exchange restricting you. They're just following that guideline. So, but but Bitru has been very good uh, and very easy to uh, to open up with. That's right. Um, I think that uh, it is really something that is uh, that is needed and will be really uh, welcome to restart. Uh, I can't wait to have market making uh, back there. Yeah. And there is also some progress that's being made um, on the. Uniswap liquidity pool. So I don't know if you all remember, but we talked about that a few episodes ago. Um, Change now is basically on hold. Uh, they will be able to restart uh, completely the pairing with Divi, but only whenever we either um, hire them to make that uh, liquidity or market making role. Um, so that would be $30,000. So obviously for now, the foundation is not able to move forward with that option. However, the other option was to bring the Uniswap liquidity pool to $100,000. And we did uh, find a party who 
seems to show um, very big interest in in providing this liquidity. Uh, that person has been supporting DV uh, since years. He has been really critical to many things, and um, it looks like he's interested to fulfill that role. I mean, obviously, that role is also open to everybody. I remind you that um, if you put your liquidity there, so let's say like you put $500 of DV and then $500 of ETH, whatever trading that happens there, you will get a piece of the fees. Um, and so obviously, once change now is able to reconnect to that, that would mean that any trade involving DV that would go through change now would generate fees for the people who have liquidity in that pool. So definitely a, a big benefit there. So no accomplishment yet on that side. However, we're definitely moving forward and, and it looks like we have uh, an option for uh, re-establishing change now through bringing that liquidity to a hundred thousand dollar. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So things are moving. Things are moving. <laughs> so right. We also talk about our partner, the one who's helping us get to side chains. Um, they reached a critical milestone towards funding. There's not really much else to tell you about it. Uh, it's going well. Um, uh, feedback from them uh, about that tech and so forth is all is all really good. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, I wish we wish we could be more specific, but we just we just can't. <laughs> That's right. I think I think we can say that um, they are building a strong network. And, and and they are being successful at that. Unfortunately, before, um, as we talked several times, before they actually uh, raised that uh, sweet check, um, yeah. there is not much to talk about. So we're, yeah. we're giving you updates about how it's happening. And it is clearly uh, making giant steps. But until that happens, it is um, it is kind of complicated to, to open more. I think we were thinking that it would most likely be ready to go public by early 2025. Um, but, but yeah, uh, nothing um, set in stone for that. Um, yeah. But the market is also uh, kind of getting a lot more welcoming to that momentum. And, and it is uh, definitely looking uh, very, very uh, interesting for us. Yeah. I think, I think the most important thing that I would stress is that, it's going to be very exciting for us to be able to bring the updates. And I think everybody will be appreciative and excited once we bring that updates. Um, there will be lots of good things coming. And, and, and it's kind of like Chris, waiting for Christmas for those who celebrate uh, <laughs> Christmas. It's, it's, you know it's coming. Yeah. <laughs> and even though we don't have a date, we have an unknown because of course so many different variables that are falling in place. We want to open up this package. <laughs> we don't even know what's in the package. Yeah. It's not, not a great an idea, here. but we want to open it. Christmas. We want to open it. <laughs> and back to last videos, right? Um, especially the last one, um, doing that properly takes time yes. and requires to do things properly because otherwise you will most likely get stuck somewhere. And yeah. It is very hard to get out of those um, situations. So if you actually do it right, build the right network, uh, do the things properly, um, once it starts, it is actually starting very fast and it's going very well. And yeah. so that's really um, what our partner is trying to achieve. And, and I think um, it, it is really, um, they are really being successful at that. And, and I think that's, uh, that's really great to to hear. Now, there is also some DV uh, communication that we have to put in place, right? So I think that, <clears throat> sorry, we've, we've talked about marketing many times. And I think that with the market waking up and then all the things kind of taking place for DV uh, able to recover, I think it's time to put in place uh, part of our marketing strategy. Um, so I remind you that we do have a private group of people who are extremely supportive in um, bringing DV uh, back in the market. And, um, and so those people were already the ones who founded uh, Zegex, right? The Zegex yes. listing, uh, the Zegex mm -hmm. liquidity, but also the founding for bringing back the desktop vote is also coming from that group. And then 
we also have some marketing activity and mainly a new website and then probably some element on Twitter and, and YouTube. But, but basically, we'll start that. And the more people we have who help, the better it is, right? So first of all, you can expect to have some DV uh, news and some DV attention or some attention brought to DV soon. But, but again, like if anyone is interested to help in that endeavor, you can contact me in, in DM, uh, Telegram or Discord, and then we can organize to, uh, to bring you in those groups. Cool. Awesome. I think uh, that brings us to the end of today, no? I think so. We, we didn't really bring a technical part to, to this um, video update. Uh, there is a Thanksgiving uh, very soon, and then we didn't really... I think you were at a conference. You didn't, didn't really talk about that this time, but you were at a conference last week, so we didn't really uh, have so much time to prepare on the technical side, but I think yeah. it's already like a more than 30 minute, almost 40 minute update. So let us know how you feel about that. Uh, if you yeah. wanted more or um, if you wanted to hear about something, as usual, give us your feedback. Please. Absolutely. Uh, make sure you make sure you do post it on the YouTube or make sure you do mention it in the um, the uh, Telegram channel. We uh, for those of you who still haven't vi revisited the Telegram channel, it is now open again. Post your questions there. We'd like to see more comments. Uh, coming back and and on the information we're sharing, if there's anything you want us to dig into detail wise, a lot of people will mention even other blockchains, which we've gone over some of those other blockchains. Again, it's not a competition, it, but there are some differences. We're willing to talk about those too. So we're happy, happy to discuss what you're interested in. And and that conversation actually about the uh you know, the exchange that we just had made me think about mm -hmm. um, topic that we could cover in one of the next mm -hmm. video, which is the e-residency. I think a lot of our users uh, could potentially oh, be yeah. interested about how it works and what process they would have to follow and what kind of possibilities it, it would bring them, right? I think it is a, it's kind of a good topic. It is a good topic. It is a good topic. I was looking at doing that. So maybe, maybe by then I will have at least a uh, filled something out to look at some of those sort of digital nomad and e-residency um, Some first-hand knowledge. Yeah, I'll, I'll give it a try. I'll give it a try. Cool. Sounds good. Cool beans. All right, guys. Okay. Thanks I so much. Thanks, everyone. Adios. See you All next right. time.